When somebody tells you that they don't wear fragrance or perfume, fragrance, perfume, what's that? No, I don't wear that. I can't be bothered with any of that. What do you say? What goes through your mind? Comment down below. Do you give them that look of disdain as I do that? You know what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on this channel we talk about nothing but fragrances. I was going to say, well, hello, my da my da no, I don't want to say my darlings, no. Welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition. I'm Gabby and here on this channel we talk about nothing but fragrances. So if that is your bread and butter, then you know what to do today. It's, it's a bit of an impromptu, formal, informal, formal, informal, what's the word? Let's just discuss, look, why fragrance? Why fragrance? Well, look behind me. This is what I do. This is what I'm good at. I'm not good at many things, but one thing that I am good at is my job, doing nails and fragrance. Apart from that, there's not really much cop really. Oh, okay, all right. I have a degree in languages, but I'm not gonna like boost my ego up there. But there we go. So I'm talking about what do I contribute? back to the world. Well, this here is contributing to the beauty industry, isn't it? Let's face it. Without this, the beauty industry, the fragrance industry, the skincare industry, the cosmetics industry would come to a grinding halt. So let's just delve into why I started fragrance. So I've always loved fragrance. I've always had a sensitive nose as far back as I as I can remember. And before I go on rambling, I have to say this is all down to scented snowdrops. Jonathan, Jonathan, I preferred calling you Jonathan. I don't know why, but there we go. I think Jonathan has a, a nicer ring tone to it whatever. Anyway, Jonathan Scented Snowdrops, we all know him. If you don't know him, you're living on another planet. So go and check out his Instagram channel. Go check out his YouTube channel. He talks about randomness and that's what I love. And he takes you on walks of the north um, while talking about fragrance and vlogging and blogging, whatever it's called, whatever the in word is, but he does that and he does it with such passion and such enthusiasm and I just love him. So go and check him out. So my first scent memory was from my grandmother and she wore L'Heure Bleu by Guerlain and so that does have a big scent memory to me as a child. But really, apart from that, I don't really have any associations with scent of perfumes, of smell, to a strong degree, really. It wasn't really until really my 20s when I really discovered perfume. I've always had a sensitive nose and I've always had a nose that I can detect smells quite strongly. Some can be quite faint, but I will still be able to smell them quite strongly. Um, so I've always had that kind of sense of smell, I suppose. But really going, why do we like fragrance? Why, why do I love fragrance? I love fragrance because it comforts me and, and it is a part of me as a person. It's a part of who I am. It's a part of 
how I want to be for that day. It's not just a grab and go fragrance that I just think, oh, I just need that. That just need, just give me something just so I can smell nice. No, it is, <laughs> it's great thought <laughs> applying a fragrance with whatever you're wearing, whether it's suited and booted or whether you're wearing something to a formal occasion or whether you're wearing something snuggling up with your other half it it depends on your mood and it depends on the occasion and then there are people who have signature scents and yes i've had had or have a signature or a known for a fragrance such as angel but and i need to spray it because that's who I am, that's who I am. But I could never wear a fragrance, a signature fragrance all year round. I could not even wear a signature fragrance for the seasons, like four fragrances a year. No, I'm not like that. I, I love all different kinds of fragrances, although my nose, maybe isn't as wide or open as others are but angel i mean we all know it we all love it it's it's something i've always loved um it is a an original candy floss fragrance and it and when i first wore it it made me feel who i am and it still makes me feel who I am now. It's a part of me, it's an extension of me, it's in my blood and my soul, and it reflects many different aspects of my character. Lots of different aspects. So in the 90s, I had and still have a very good friend. Her name is Victoria. And she took me under her wing and we went through a lot and I was going through a lot at the time, but I remember her dressing table. And I want to use this in this video because she loved fragrance and she had an array of fragrances and there were several in particular that I loved. One was Isatis by Givenchy. Another was Estée Lauder, White Linen. And another one was Anaïs Anaïs by Cacherel. And we would go out clubbing, wearing this fragrance in the mid 90s and thinking we were the bee's knees and I I still love it now and this is a first formula but I love a fragrance that is complex and this is a complex fragrance it has everything in it all the florals all the everything you can think of it's, it's a bombastic floral. And I've always loved floral fragrances. I love flowers. And I love the art of perfumery using traditional flowers and traditional tinctures. I love that kind of aspect really fascinates me using resins and spices and flowers and all the natural raw materials that you can find combining with synthetic materials as well to create a balance and I love that science behind fragrance and let's face it it's it's just perfumed water added with whatever that's added into there to to make it what it One is. fragrance I remember that I had a love-hate relationship with. 
I loved it, but I did overspray it too much. And it was one that Victoria wore. And she said she doesn't, when I, when I spoke to her once, she said, oh, no, I don't wear that now. And I think to myself, why? Why do you not wear it, Victoria? But anyway, this fragrance is Trésor by Lancôme. And for me, I've got to find the nozzle. Are you one of these people that you have to have the nozzle right at the front? I'm going to spray a little bit on my hand. No, actually, I'm not going to spray it in the air. It is peach cream puff, that's how I describe it, with a little bit of rose. But I love this sense of, it gives me now comfortness. Comfortness, is that a word? Fragrances can give you many, many different feelings and emotions. And now, when I wear this, it gives me that memory of the late 90s and also when I met Richard as well and I remember us coming back from Paris once and I bought a full bottle of this thought I'm going to get myself a full, full bottle and I sprayed about this was obviously a, and then an older formula and I sprayed about 12 sprays of it all just <laughs> and I was on a train at the time I choked out that train I choked the people out and it made me feel a bit nauseous. So I had a bit of a memory associated with that. And now with this fragrance, when I do spray it, even now it's still quite a heavy fragrance. So I spray it fairly lightly, but I think to myself, well, I... I, I kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to bring that back. I don't really, I said I don't really have an open nose to a lot of things, but looking at my collection, I do, I do, but I have a very, very specific um, portfolio of fragrances. Um, and now I just curate fragrances that I love and I wear and I need I still blind buy on the odd occasion. This fragrance community that I've learned to know. There is a lot of support there. I mean, I started my YouTube channel in the middle of the pandemic in 2020, towards the end of 2020. And so I've been doing it now for about 18 months. And I... I started the channel because I, well, I wanted to do something and I thought to myself, how, what am I going to do to keep myself occupied? And I already had a, quite a number of fragrances already. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to start a fragrance channel. Let's do something that I really love. Let's do something that I really am passionate about. And and I do really get passionate about it. When I speak to my husband, oh, I've got to get this fragrance. Oh, look at this one. Look at that one. It's like yada yada, bit of do, diddle do, bibbidi bobbidi boo, all of that gumph. Do you get that when you say to your other half or your family members or your or people that don't really get fragrance, do so they look at you and think she or he or whoever? They are, they're something else, aren't they? They're a piece of work. I I wish, I wish, I would love Richard to understand, but he's not going to understand fragrance from how I can understand and appreciate it. He likes fragrance. He has a few bottles of fragrance. He doesn't, he finds it hard to understand why I have a lot of fragrance. But there are people who have a, a lot of shoes. I don't. There are people that collect other things I mean what <laughs> people collect things because they love them I collect fragrances because I love them it's my passion it's my hobby I try to work within my means it can be hard but 
and Richard kind of reins me in sometimes but it is difficult if you've not really got any support from anybody else but that aside Richard does support me regardless so I am happy now, I said that. I didn't really have a, an open nose to lots of things but really when you talk about when you, when you think of hypnotic poison which I really think was a classic gourmand of its time and still is almond and vanilla centric and to me again when I first smelt this I didn't like it but it because it wasn't floral but I now love it is my nose changing am I getting more into gourmands watch this space there is one fragrance that I really really want to get I have a huge wish, wish list but I'm pretty sure it has a lot of gourmand or some gourmand notes in it to watch this space however going back to hypnotic poison do we and let's talk about vintages and discontinued fragrances now this is not really a vintage but this is a pre-reformulation of the new formula that's out there but this is a pre-reformulated version of the original one so do you yearn or long for vintage fragrances do you i do i am a vintage girl at heart always have been i've always loved the 1930s the 1940s i've always loved that era when women did not have to show loads of skin to be sexy i know claude and claude agrees yeah you do don't you claude yeah coming back to hypnotic poison this to me is quite a gourmand fragrance because of the vanilla in there and the almond because let's face it vanilla and almonds you eat so i class that as a gourmandise fragrance and i didn't think i would love it as much now some people would say it's not that at all it's not a gourmand it is a vanilla gourmand fragrance so is my nose changing maybe this isn't the best example because it's not a sweet candy like fragrance that i cannot do at all cannot i just can't do that at all and i would say one of the sweetest fragrances is flower bomb nectar which i love and that's sweet that's sweet as anything but i love it so if i love it i'm gonna have it and i've got to tell myself if you love it gabby take it accept it then i do love a classic white floral so dior pure poison again dior is one of my beloved designer houses and i have this and i also have two 30 ml bottles because i cannot be without pure poison but again i have this thing of fear of missing out because i longed for the white cap and i got the white cap and because again the formula isn't as strong why do they change formulas well we know why because it's all to do with money and sales and profits and that's it and ifra and reformulations but white florals are my jam they really are but i never thought that i would really get into niche fragrances indie fragrances fragrances that are made by independent perfumers and it was through the fragrance community through learning and always looking for something that's maybe slightly different but it was coming across i would say let's face it the first person i saw or spoke about this brand was our claire smurfy girly so and also i would say the other person i saw talk about this brand was lizzie rose and jones and they spoke about a fragrance called tobacco rose from papillon i 
sampled the discovery set and the rest is history and then that took me to an animalic scent which is Salome which I never thought that I would fall in love with I never thought that I would love an animalic sheepra I've always I always loved the classic sheepra fragrances but I never thought I would love a sheepra that has an overdose oh, of those animalic facets with Salome. Now, some people say it's just too much for them. And then I've heard one or two others say it's just right for them. And then me, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, Liz Moore's the perfumer behind Papillon. When I came across her Instagram page, I was just drawn in to something i think it was it was just the nature aspect the horses the cats the animals that was first and then the fragrance came in second and salome for me opened my nose to animalic fragrances which I would probably say is my number one category of fragrances, maybe, but not animalics on their own. A floral animalic, a sheepra animalic. And this richness thick, alluring, decadent. It encapsulates the 1930s, the Bette Davis, the Jean Harlow, the Louise Brooks of the late 20s. It, it, yeah, it captures everything in that it transport the first time i smelt this i felt it's gonna be some people are going to be like what? i felt like i had gone back in time but i was living in a parallel universe it was modern day but there was i living in this era that i felt right in so that's what Salome does for me. And this is what a fragrance should do for you. It shouldn't, it should be something that is intrinsic to you as a person. And this perfume just opened up a Pandora's box. It literally did. It literally did. It is, yeah. It's it, it amber pure nectar for me. It is bold and audacious. And I, I now am on a journey in, I don't like that word journey. I'm now in a point of my perfumista life. Yes, living in this fantasy, or, you know, living in this reality, but creating a fantasy. And this is what perfume can do for you. You're living in a reality, but you're creating a fantasy. Yeah, that's so true. And Papillon, the whole line of the fragrances. Liz, what did you do? It just opened up my nose to, wow, it, how a perfumer can create a fragrance that really speaks and has raw emotion to it. And I love that, I love that. On to Liz's latest acquisition. I just have a sample here of Hera and I've already used half of it. I'm so nervous to use it all up, which is complete polar opposite to Salome. I always say, I say, Hera is the prelude to the encounter, whereas Salome is 
in the throes and the aftermath of the encounter, if that's how I could describe the two fragrances. Although, fragrance is what you make it. I'm just saying that. I'm just giving an example. You know, you might disagree and say, no, it's the other way around. And that's absolutely fine. We all have different views and opinions on how fragrances work for us. But that's the kind of picture I get from Hera. This, I'm not going to really talk too much about it because once I get the full bottle, I will do a full review on this. I will have to say, to date, in my perfumista life, in this fantasy of a reality that I'm calling it, this has prob is probably one of the best, if not the best, creations I've ever smelt and that's a bold sweeping statement to make I know but I mean you've got jasmine orange blossom elang rose oris narcissus heliotrope ambrette and musk so abundant in florals and and it's everything I love in a floral fragrance but there is this zestiness of I don't know if it's the ambrette, it's sparkling and it's semi-sweet and it's powdery and waxy and vintage and modern and heady and all of that and more. And it represents a point in my life as well that I feel comfortable in myself struggling with my anxiety and depression, yet being able to focus when wearing this. That's what fragrance can do. That's how it can be in your life. And let's be passionate about it. Yeah, some people might say, that's just a load of twaddle you're talking. Fine. But those who get me, will get me. Those who don't, won't. And if I've changed one person's perception of fragrance, I've done my job. That's how I see it. But Hera from Papillon is my number one fragrance. Well, it was not my number one fragrance. Papillon is my number one brand. It's, 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 a, it's my, it's, it's everything. It really is, and I just love fragrance. Hi, I'm Gabby, and I'm addicted to fragrance, so shoot me. And by the way, if you are going to shoot me, at least shoot me with Squirt's fragrance. Sometimes a fragrance can be a love at first sniff, and sometimes you smell something and you're not sure if you like it at all, and then you kind of have a bit of an epiphany with the fragrance as well. Angel's Dust by Francesca Bianchi. Like Hera, it's powdery, but the black pepper and that oris is there, that iris, that purple floral. Oh, and it's beautiful and it sweetens on my skin and it is feathery and billowing and and I never thought I would like it but it's dark as well it's dark and sharp it's and I like a fragrance that has a duality to it I like a fragrance Sometimes it's nice to have a simplistic, linear fragrance. And then there are other times, again, like Francesca Bianchi, like Papillon, they're the two probably most loved fragrance houses I loved, independently owned by two women, two strong women, two women that know what they want, but probably still have their daily life struggles but still manage to convey a part of themselves, a part of their mind, a part of their being into a creation. And that then speaks to me. And it's a journey of the senses. It's a, journey, it's a continuous journey. And this is what Angel's Dust is probably my number one 
fragrance from, from Francesca Bianchi that I love, that I have. I have several others. I have Sex and the Sea, Sex and the Sea Neroli, and another one which is on my wish list. It's Lost in Heaven. That one, to me, is probably going to be like this, like Hera is to Salome. So yeah, if I'm giving an, an equation, an analogy there. But Angel's Dust, it, it's vintage. It's a DNA. And I love that perfumer's DNA. It's strong. Extrait de parfum. And I never thought I would grow to love it, but I love it. I mean, I've made, I have made one hell of a dent in there. And I spray about three sprays and that's the maximum. But yeah, she goes lovely with my nails. Angel's Dust, Francesca Bianchi. It's Francesca Bianchi, her animalic facets, especially in Lost in Heaven, even in Sex and the Sea, Neroli and Sex and the Sea and The Lover's Tale, which I have and I love and that's completely different to this but it still has a little drop of that perfumer's DNA in and that's what I love about the fragrance you can identify with it and go with it so my nose now has changed so much over the years especially since I've started my channel and there are oodles of content YouTube and Instagram creators out there. There is a lot out there. But I'm glad to be part of the fragrance community. I'm glad to feel part of the gang. And, but we can all learn from each other and we can all give something to the perfume industry and that's what I love. So thank you for that long, thank you for watching for this long video. Thank you John Scented Snowdrops. Thank you to all my subscribers and people, even if you aren't subscribed to me, that's fine. Even if you just like to watch me, that's fine. I don't care. I do care, but I don't care that you have to subscribe to me. I just care that you're listening to me. And if you want to do listen more to me, then you can subscribe, obviously. But for me, I'm just grateful and happy to be able to be sitting in front of this camera, talking to an audience and being who I am. So until next time, when somebody says to you, who the hell are you? Turn round to them and say, I'm the queen. And who the hell are you? And Claude agrees. Bye for now.